So, hello everyone. My name is Mike Cheese, and I'm from AAA. I'm sitting here together with Osiris. Hello, hey. everybody. <laughs> Today, we will be uh, showing us off uh, EverQuest as part of our little series about the evolution of MMO RPGs. So, last uh, last week, we were having a look at Ultima Online, and you'll be able to find the link on the screen this very moment, and also in the comments below if you want to check that out. Yes. So, yes. So yeah, EverQuest. Uh, EverQuest is like 13 years old by now and went free to play just this uh, March. So it was a perfect time for us to take a look at it. And Indeed. before I s tell you about uh, much, yeah, anything uh, actually about the game, I'll just show off the, the character screen here real quick. This is my very nice and very uh, actually, not very nice. Uh, very purple, level 7 warrior. Um, yeah, one everyone of is purple. Yeah, exactly. Everyone is purple after they get out in the starting zone. It is it is rather horrible, actually. So, this is one of the two characters I'll have available. Um, you'll have to pay to unlock more. So, here I'll just press create character. Yep. Okay, there we go. So this is where you create characters. You have four characters uh, of four different races available for free. And you also have four classes available for free. And that is out of 16 different races and 16 different classes. So we are talking about the humans, the gnomes, the barbarians, and the erudites. I don't even. Uh, then we have warrior, wizard, rogue, and cleric available as uh, as the classes. So you can you can change a few things here when you want uh, to make a new character. You can set the like which religion they belong to, and that actually has some consequences in the game way more than in in other games. Um, you can go into advanced mode here to set uh, to set their stats, I suppose. Mm, yeah, okay, you can, you can change some of the stats, but not all of them. Well, that's probably one of the primary stats, as far as I can tell here. And then you, of course, have the appearance... Yeah, for, advanced, for, for advanced players that know what stat they want to max out and start, so they just... Yeah, exactly, exactly. So here we have, like, the... Um, uh, the appearance of the character. It's kind of standard and <laughs> kind of ugly. I mean, they have this nice little feature where you, when you change the hair, it starts, the camera starts to rotate around the character. That's actually all right, neat, given that you, you can't actually rotate the character with your mouse. So. But. Yeah, the game did not age very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, indeed, it didn't. And sure. we will, we will show that off as well later. But I don't want to create a new character. I will enter the world on my warrior. May I just add that I find that a horrible uh, free to play design that you actually only have four of the 16 classes and races available and you have to pay the other ones yeah indeed so should we just should we just get this this out of the way straight away though Ozzy? this whole uh, monetization of it uh, yes because it's something you notice a lot actually so the game is essentially free to play and you get uh, I think you get the first 17 expansions and only you only have to pay for the 18th expansion, right? Yeah. Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of weird, I guess. Yeah, it is a bit know. given that you actually I think they they added five more levels in the last expansion so you're kind of dividing your your player base like that. Um, well, that's one of the things. The other thing is, as you said, that they have limited uh, amount of uh, races and classes available, and you'll have to buy. Um, yeah. I don't. Same word. Uh, no, I was just gonna say that any game that goes free to play or is free to play should never base their model around you having to buy stuff in order to play the game properly. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. It's very discouraging, and it's just. Basically saying you're not playing the full game unless you pay money. So what's the real difference between playing for free and playing uh, paying for money? I mean, the problem I could easily see with this system is that 
you will end up having a lot of warriors, rogues, clerics, and wizards, and not some of all the other races. So, um, and how are you going to find out what, what, if you like it or not? It's just like, oh, I'm just going to buy it and see if I like it, and then you have to spend half a year on it, and then, no, I don't like it, I'm going to buy something else. So how does that work? Exactly. And as far as I've been able to tell, you can also buy stuff like weapons, aka power, uh, with with money. I'm not a huge fan of that either. No, that's, that's bad. And it costed for for a class. It costed like you'd have to buy two. So you buy you buy like 500 points that which you spend on items at a time. And what was that? Was that uh, 45 dollars or something? How was it? Uh, yeah, wait. I'll look it up. Just continue. On. Well, it's 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 just it's it's close to that at least, and you have to buy that two times to actually be able to unlock a new uh, a new class. So it gets fairly expensive very very fast actually. Um, but you can of course you can pay to be a gold and a silver member uh, where you have monthly fees. I think the gold member that's some um, monthly fee of fifteen dollars, actually. But that should unlock all the content for you. So it's up to you, really. Yeah. It, yeah. If you buy a lot in the store, yeah. you sh- you might as well go gold member, as far as I can tell. But um, yeah, I think in, in, yeah. enough about that. I mean, we're not we're not fan of that model at all. Uh, not not this heavy. Um, so so five hundred. 500 uh, points is 34 Norwegian krona. Okay, so, so that, that that wasn't as bad. That's like not that expensive. that's like nine or ten dollars, I suppose. Um, but um, but it can get expensive real fast. 34 Norwegian krona at the moment is four euros. So okay, that's really not good. Um, but yeah, let's. But, but yeah, this game. Didn't always used to be free to play, like you said. It just went free to play this March. Uh, this game came out in 1999, uh, which is a long time ago, and um, a lot has changed over the years. Uh, for example, uh, Sony Online Entertainment uh, took over in 2003 or something. 2001. Uh, I think you said 2001. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, I think so too. They got they took over, and uh, a lot of people claim that uh, around 2003, when a certain expansion came out, I can't remember the name at this very moment, that the game went really downhill because of some really bad design choices on Sony's part. And, uh, yeah, it really broke the game instead of trying to fix. Was it the expansion where they forgot the to add extra levels? I think it's uh, <laughs> oh well, they they, uh, they the didn't was impossible to play. Yeah, they players. didn't forget, but they they had planned to uh, add additional five levels, and they decided not to. But the content was kind of scaled to be five levels harder than than what players could do. So it's it was it was a mess, and it uh, introduced tons of other bugs as well. So yeah, but I mean, this is the first three D game, and when you look at this now, you think this looks really bad. And it does, but that's just because it didn't age very well, and the company that took over just didn't really spend the time and effort to make this game a lot better than than it was over the years. But if you put your mindset in around 1999 and think about how epic it was to explore this open world in 3D with other people, that that I feel kind of bad that I actually wasn't. That I didn't know about this yeah. game at that time. It sounds very epic when you read about it, and and it also f- it feels alright when you play it. Actually, I mean, you can see that the world is is big, and there's just so much to to do and explore. Um. Yeah, yeah. And the basically was the game was really free as well because you just got put in this world, and you could do whatever you want, and there were very few quests, and you could go anywhere, and almost nothing was instance as far as I I know, and it was just very like player driven. Uh, you could do whatever you wanted to do, be hostile with everyone, and be friends with everyone if you killed the right people for it for the yeah. factions. Which but I mean, this really you you mentioned the graphics earlier, and this is actually not uh, nineteen ninety nine graphics. 
This is uh, the, yeah. all. Of this was updated uh, in in patches later. They they have. I mean, as we said earlier, seventeen, uh, no, eighteen expansions and patches in between. So they updated all the character models and stuff in uh, in the, in an expansion. And if you'd like to see how the old Ocust, uh looks like, what it looks like, we actually have some videos for you. You can find them uh, in a link on the screen right now, or you can uh, can try to have a look at the in yeah in the description. So yeah. But but this game was fairly successful. I mean, obviously it was the first major 3D MMORPG. But in fun fact, the first of November 1999, it had over 225,000 active subscriptions. Which, for a game in 1999 of this type, this genre, I think is a pretty big deal. Um, yeah, in they they peaked around 400 and 2003, four years later, right? they. they they had 40, 250. That's right about the time where they get uh, they made the fill expansion, and I think a lot of people jumped off after that. So yeah, I have no idea what the active subscriptions were before it went free to pay, but I can only imagine that it was probably the same as the gold gold obviously. membership now, I, I guess. Uh, but I mean, with this being said. We don't really have any relation to EverQuest at all. We haven't we haven't played it before. This is the first time we're we're giving it a try. Um, no. So we we have both we have both been playing a World of Warcraft, and, and there's uh, many similarities in in mechanics and ideas, at least between the two games. Yeah, I think this game did a lot of unique things at the time. I mean, if you look at Ultima Online and then this, like the action bars. And uh, UI and classes. Uh, I also believe this this game is the first game that introduced threat mechanic at, and tanks and healers. Um, because in games like Ultima Online, uh, it worked like the players close, closest that had the aggro, as far as I read. Uh, this game actually did a huge leap forward in yeah. that regard with the classes and Exactly. If you saw Ultima Online last week, you'd notice that you were very free to choose whatever path you wanted. You were actually not really tied uh, to any specific classes. For real, that was more like your 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 skills uh, that were would be different from character to character. Whereas in this game, it is uh, it is class based. Um, so I'll just I'll just uh making a small apology about the the camera it kind of it's kind of jumpy and the frame rate isn't that high and it's not because i'm running on a bad computer or anything it is just the game is horribly optimized and it's it's really really hard to get a good yeah. frame rate when there are other characters on the screen it helps a lot when you get out in the world and you have some huge area with not a lot of stuff on it but in here it's just it's just terrible so which is also why i try not to move around yeah. too much yeah even with the, the lightning off and the shadows off, it's like I still get I go under thirty sometimes, and I'm not even having fraps on it. You do, so I can only imagine. That's yeah, I, I'm around I don't, t- ten to thirty in this uh, in this area. That's actually horrible. And you'll have to excuse us for not being really far in the game because this game is really hard to get into because it, it's very buggy and. The animations are not smooth, and it's it has a really, really hard and long learning curve because there is so much stuff going on on the screen and, and stuff that you need to read and know about. Uh, that's why there's a tutorial in tutorial in this game as well, where there's just a specific area with all the quest mobs and, and that teaches you everything you need to know about yeah. the game, pretty much. Which we've already done because that's kind <laughs> of boring. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad an area, actually. It, it learned you pretty much everything. It's just that there's so much to learn, so you'll forget some of it again. Um, yes. Could you? Uh, but I'm kind of. Could you trade me some? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. If I know, can I do a slash trade? The ability to sell in the bazaar has been disabled because you do not have at least gold membership. Okay, cool. And Open your open open your inventory and I'm ah yeah that might be a fair idea. So here we can just get a while we are doing all this we can just okay. we can get a look at how the inventory looks and the inventory is also my character uh, screen at the same time. Have my stats 
uh, a different kind of resistance, I suppose, to this. Um, you can see some more of my stats on this screen. There's, there's a ton of stats and a ton of reading to do, and it's it's very it's very easy to see that this game has been in development for so many years. There is so much stuff to see and learn and do. Um, so, and I would just like to say that that that's fair enough, right? That this game is so deep and so complex, and I and I actually find that very cool, and I would love to get into it, but. They have had 18 years to smooth this game over with maybe a better UI and, and simplifying things for newer players at least. Not dumping down the game, I'm not saying that, but at least make it more acceptable. Because when you jump in the game and you get this screen in front of you, you're just thinking, what the fuck? And you're almost just discouraged to log off again because it's... it's just yeah, horrible. we've been complaining a bit. And we've been co complaining about that quite a lot while we've been playing. Actually, the UI, it's... It doesn't look very good. It doesn't look like it belongs in the game. And there are so many different UI elements. And it's very hard to actually keep track of and remember how you open them and stuff like that. Uh, and what they do. So. But, um. Uh, I'm sorry, Ozzy, by the way. I can't trade you the, the milk because it is, it is a no trade item. It's because I got it in the beginning. So. You will have to find some milk or oh, die. <laughs> I suppose. All right. Got milk. <laughs> I will find. Some milk. <laughs> this is such an odd problem, but yeah, your your character God, consumes food and uh, and water just passively uh, while they are while you walk around in the world. So you have to you have to actually be aware of that, especially if you're like going to a desert, you'll consume more than if you're just standing around here. Yeah, the game is very heavy RPG. On yes, that exactly. Uh, and it's it's true to that, unlike other games uh, that we'll mention in the future. So, but also uh, while you, f well, and uh, okay, I'll just no, like no, uh, while while you're finding some milk, I'll just find. show off the um, the crafting. Okay, yeah, so yeah. of course there is there is crafting in the game. Um, and the crafting works like you go over to whatever object you're going to use for crafting. Like I'm going to use this. It's a oven for a pottery. But the thing is I'm going to repair some uh, plate items. It's a, it's a quest I have. We haven't actually been working on our professions that much except for in the starting area. Because again, there's so much to do here. So normally you'd have, if you actually had discovered any recipes, you would be able to find them here uh, by searching for for whatever. But the problem is, oh yeah, I actually have a discovered symbol uh, repair plate, which is what I've been uh, doing in this quest. So before we had learned that, we had to press experiment up here, then drag one of these uh, broken symbol plates together with some whatever this is, some bonding agent into this window and combine them. And that will then learn you uh, the the well learn you this this recipe for making the repaired plates. I just try and bring it up again. There we are. So right now I can just press combine, and I suppose yeah. So I'm crafting them now, but as far as I can tell, I'm not very lucky. So you're not certain to actually be able to to uh, get any items when you craft, it depends on your skill. There we go, there I made one. So I have to make 20 of them. I actually, in the beginning we had like uh, 40 of these bonding agents and 20 of the broken symbol plates. We ran out of symbol plates because we were we were failing so much. So we had to go back to the NPC and and request more and that's that's also an interesting thing when you interact with NPCs, but we will show you that later. I'll just finish this, I hope. Oh god, let me have enough, please. There we are, just one more, please. There's perfect. Okay, so let's see. This NPC gave me the quest. Uh, I'll then give her the 20 repaired plates. No? 
You cannot give simple repair because you're allowed to give stacks of items to an NPC. Wait a second. Can I just... I hope, I hope I'm wrong on this. Huh. Okay, so apparently I can't give the whole stack to her. Um. Hmm. A lot of things yeah, exactly. So, as far as I can tell right now, the way I'll have to do this is I'll have to trade her four at a time, all the items, and then complete the quest. Because, I mean, usually, when you interact with an NPC, you will uh, go to them, select them, press your H button, or, or do a emote, that is, slash hail, and then the character will say something to you. I don't know if you are able to see it with the quality I'm recording this in, but this character then says to me, have you come for training? And the training are in some square brackets. So I can, while having the, um, the NPC selected, I can then write whatever. Uh, but it has to contain the word training, so I can either just write training, or I could do it more roleplay style, um, saying, yes, I have come for training. Presenter and okay, so the NPCs then respond to this. Uh, she says the circle of the crystal wing has decided as a group that the best way to teach is by experience. You will be given a series of tasks that you can use to learn about the, the skill you are working on. When you are ready, simply tell me when. When you are ready, simply tell me that you are ready to start, and I will assign you a task appropriate for your skill. And this time it's. Uh, ready to start that in brackets. So I'll just go. Well, I'm ready to start. Okay, and um, yeah, okay. So I already have the quest from her, of course, uh, which it now tells me. So that's probably mean I have to give her all these items one at a time, and I'm not going to do that. So, Osi, where where are you? Okay, did, didn't downstairs. you find that librarian guy? Because on the, then I'll just complete the quest with him. Uh, or was that downstairs? Uh, yeah. Where was that? <laughs> okay, this. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's I'll, down here. I'll come down straight away. Down here. Without, I'm not gonna jump down. That'll probably just kill me. All the shortcuts are really awkward. It's like Alt Q Alt something and weird combinations of. Buttons. Yeah, indeed, they're, they're kind of hard to remember. We have the EverQuest button in the right side of the screen where I can, like, okay, here's here, where I can, like, open different uh, windows. So that makes it, makes it all a bit easier. Okay, I'm down. Um, where did you go? I think I can see you now. Ah, there he is. Cool. So we probably have to, do we have to give something to him? The book? No? Is it him that we need to talk to? I don't know. Let's try and help him. Okay, somebody told me you'll be stopping by. Yeah, yeah cool. Talk to. Uh, Head upstairs and grab a copy of my of the charter. My staff's just finished scribing a new set. We can hardly keep up with the number of new faces. We need to learn about a fine city. Okay, so we just have to get back up. Yes. Okay. Have you got a staff? Sounds please? like it. Oh, I missed the elevator. Oh no, his staff. Oh no, his staff just finished scribing a new set. Uh, yeah, and grab a copy of the charter. His yeah, okay. His, his, his staff has in his his employ employer. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, that's what you get when we don't. We are not really uh, English speaking. Mysterious, natively. So. Head upstairs and grab a copy of the charter. Okay, but. How do well, we know that's where that the is? good question. Perhaps try and look in the in the quest log. I suppose perhaps that tells you something. I'll see if I can f find the quest log because, to be honest, I really don't. There we go. Quest journal. That's all Q. That's right. Find the find the city charter in a bookcase upstairs. Okay, so I sadly don't really see any bookcases around. Okay. 
The, actually, you know what, OC? Uh, we had some quests mm. where we had to actually kill some stuff outside the city. Nice. Wouldn't that be more interesting? Yeah, let's so that. we have already kind of showed how, I mean, we've showed you how uh, how you interact with characters, and that's a really normal way to do it. Uh, the problem, whoa, this lags, okay. The problem with the way you're doing it is actually that, that the NPC's voice and your own text and stuff come in its own uh, in the main chat window, and when you're a couple of guys standing together and interacting with the same NPC, you will see each other's quest text and stuff, and that can make it really, really hard to keep track of what's going on and what to type. Of course, you can make a new chat window. But I don't think you can get just like your that. own text in that window. Yeah, sure. You can. Hmm, okay. Why? Well, yeah, here, yeah, Steve filter. There's. And yeah, but can you can being, you make sure uh, that the, that it's only the NPC you are communicating with that will be shown in in one channel? Ah, uh, I don't know about that. All right, so. Yeah. Uh, we're going out where we were yesterday. I'm just showing off the map here. It's the map is a lot different from Ultima Online. Uh, if anybody saw our last video, Th that map was just kind of the entire world seen from very far away. Where this map is just hand drawn, really images with uh, with different kind of characters and and areas marked on it. Again, that it just hasn't been updated yet. It's really weird. It looks like something from. <laughs> 1995 or something, but uh, also no mini map. I do think they you yeah they they the it the is game. possible to uh, but, uh, to change your UI, but in this series we'll be going with the default uh, all the way. A game should be able should be playable by default. Yeah, and the default UI should should provide you with uh, yeah exactly. 